can't stand it. They're going to bring you a, a yellow visitor's card, and it's sort of like a Walmart coupon. You get to uh, turn that in at the end of service at the back table, our first timers table. Sister Shelby, wave at everybody. Over here, she'll be waiting on you back there. If you'll turn this coupon in um, at the end of service, Sister Shelby's got a really nice gift to you from the church. Just our way of saying thank you for choosing to be with us today. Let's give them another big hand. Also, something we like to do is honor folks on their birthdays and anniversaries. So any birthdays this past week or this coming week, would you please stand? Any birthdays? Carter. Carter. Yay, Carter. Anybody else? All right. You guys know what to do? Let's sing to it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.
had to share that. I got all excited and I saw different places that I just jotted down and uh, what the Lord had said for 2020. And uh, first I thought I was blindsided in 2020, but then I found that no, God always tells you beforehand. I was before the Lord in the Word yesterday, meditate on the Word, and He spoke these words to me. My church will not fear the enemy anymore. And He also said, Behold, I will do a new thing, and when it springs forth, will you not know it?
the other day, um, at Brother James' homecoming service, I experienced something as we sang this song that I've never experienced in all the services like that.
1 Corinthians chapter 3 is where our main text is going to come from. If you look on the back, of, on the front of your bulletin, it's got our text. On the back, it's got our financial statement. Anybody that's curious about our financial statement, we appreciate uh, Sister Moore, Sister Peggy, you getting that out there. Uh, but you guys can see for yourself where we are. And uh, as Sister Dolores said, um, God has continued to bless us. I just Can I just brag on the Lord for a minute? In the midst of a pandemic when a lot of businesses and a lot of churches are shutting their doors, praise God, he blessed us to be able to pay out our debt. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on. That ought to get somebody excited this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He gave us the, the uh, funds and he gave us the... Uh, through it. Um, Brother Dan, can the monitors come up just a shade? Just a shade. Um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 is where we're taking our text this morning. And uh, I want to say welcome if you are joining us on social media. We appreciate you guys being out there. Let's make our e-family feel welcome this morning. A lot of folks are having to watch from home and uh, uh, you know, for many reasons. He said, this proves that you 
are living your lives centered on yourselves, dominated by the mindset of the flesh and behaving like unbelievers. Verse 4, for when one of you says, I'm a disciple of Paul, and another one says, I'm a disciple of Apollos, he said, when you divide yourselves up into groups, I want you to notice he says, you're dividing yourselves up into groups. Nowhere does he say God divided you up into groups. He's saying, you're pulling yourself away. You're making yourself separate. You're saying, I'm following after this. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. My way is better. My way or the highway. He said, you're the one doing it. God ain't got nothing to do with it. Let's read on. He says, you divide yourselves up in groups. You're not proving yourselves unchanged. You're just ordinary people without the Spirit's influence. He said, what then, or who is Apollos? And what, or who is Paul? He says, we're both just servants through whom you believed. Our message, I believed in Christ. He said, aren't each of us doing what God's called us to do? Aren't we doing what God's called us to do? He goes on and he says, I planted a church. You know, I started a church and then Apollos came in. He watered it. He said, but it, none of that matters. What matters is that God gave the increase. It's all about the Father. It's about what God has done. It's not about what I've done. It's not about what Apollos has done. <laughs> I thought about Pastor Massingill. All the years and the effort and the time and the energy and the strength and the blood and the sweat and the tears that he's poured into ministry. And then I, I, I get to come along as pastor. And though we, you know, this has been a very difficult year to navigate in ministry, but we get to reap the benefits of the ministry that he had sown into. You don't try to erase Come on. You know, a house that has no foundation, sweetheart, is going down. And that's basically what this passage is talking about. He said, Paul said, I come in, I lay down a foundation. Then somebody else come behind me, and they built on that foundation. You know what? If, if you didn't, how much sense would it Sister Jill and Brother Clark are doing some remodeling. How much sense would it, would it make for you guys to go in and say, well, this house was built and there was a foundation here, but let's just tear down everything and let's do our own foundation just so we can say we did. And then they'll say that you sell the house and somebody else buys it and they come in and they say, well, you know what? I love what they did. It's beautiful. And they really are doing a beautiful job. But let's say that, that the next person that buys it comes in and says, I want my own foundation, so I'm going to just tear down everything that they've done and put my own thing. You're never going to get anywhere. You're never going to get anywhere. And we wonder why he comes back to a church that had been established, that had someone to water it, and he's still having to address with immaturity. I'm going to share, can I give you... Can I give you something real quick? I need, I need everybody to listen real closely. First of all, my intercessors this morning, I'm deploying you right now in the name of the Lord as intercessors. Get in your position, cover me and my family. I'm giving you charge right now to do that. This morning I have a word for you, and it's dealing with a very serious, but the Spirit said a time-sensitive subject. Those who are spiritually mature, truly, I thought you were going to go there. Those who are spiritually mature, truly love strong words, strong encouragement to press into God, and even strong correction. Because I'm telling you, spiritually mature people love strong correction. When it's in the right season, in the right spirit, he said, those that are spiritually immature, they get easily offended, they look for fault, they become critical, and they try to make excuses. Listen to this, because it, it, it shook me to my bone. They make excuses for ungodly behaviors that are a direct result of devils manifesting and being stirred up that they've been lying in bed with, sometimes without even knowing it. He said, they have been sleeping with the enemy. But here's what shook me. He said, sometimes they didn't know it. But you know what that means? Sometimes they did. 
and that shook me to my core. He said, people who say with their mouth that they love me are sleeping. They are in bed with the enemy. You remember that Julia Roberts movie, Sleeping with the Enemy, where her husband went wild and he was like this control freak and, you know, broke in her house and moved all her canned stuff around, made it all match. Don't do that to me. I don't like that movie. It's scary. But he said the people, my people, are sleeping with the enemy. Listen, today's message was made obvious to me, and I, and I was told by the Spirit to be crystal clear and transparent with you this morning. He said, I do not have time to waste tiptoeing around the flower bed, afraid of crushing tender petals. The Spirit of the Lord said, we are past that. And when I heard past that, I heard that like a shout. Almost like something slamming down. We're past that point. We don't have time. The church does not have time to sit down and wait for others to wake up anymore. We don't have time. Time is short. If it's a hundred years, it's still time is short. But, you know. He said that some will receive this today. And he said those of you that receive will grow exponentially. You will grow exponentially. He said others have already tuned you out. And he said for those who have tuned me out already. This is what he said. You will remain in the same state in this season. So if you've been spiritually dead, you're going to stay spiritually dead. Unless. Unless. He said, if that is you right now, Right now, right now, take this moment, take this second, take this minute, he said, and repent and get ready to walk out of here today with more power, amen, with more wisdom, with more purpose, with more drive, with more desire, with more victory, with more anointing than what you came in here with this morning. Somebody give it praise. I tell you, congregation, on this very first Sunday of 2021, I was sharing with the praise team before church. I said, you know, a lot of times on this day, you try to you try to hear from the Lord for a message that's kind of like, come on, let's get it. You know, it's a brand new start. It's a, uh, uh, let's make some new resolutions and some plans and have some vision and that kind of thing. Look, I have nothing on my sister. I'm done with vision. Amen. 2020, we got it, Lord. We got it. You know. But uh, I'm here for one sole purpose this morning, and that's to ensure that every man, every woman, and every child under the sound of my voice, whether here live, in person, whether on the radio, or whether watching on social media, um, I'm here to make sure that... Uh, you have the opportunity to hear and to understand the seriousness of the day that we're living. And the Spirit said to me, the opportunity that is before us. And he said, the power that is within us. Amen. Somebody give him praise. I remember thinking at one point in life how I couldn't wait to grow up. How many of you remember feeling that way? I can't wait to grow up. I used to run around with kids that are older than me. You know, I've seen other kids do that. And, and you know, it can be good, it can be bad, you know, because a lot of times you get influenced to get into other things that you shouldn't get in, you know, you shouldn't be getting into. And I used to tell my kids all the time, don't try to wish your life away. You know, enjoy the time that you have. Um, but, I, you know, I did that too. And, and I remember what it was like you know, before I could drive anywhere, you'd always have to ask your parents to take you somewhere, and, 
And I thought, man, I can't wait till I get my driver's license or, um, you know, can't wait till I do this, can't wait till I can do that. And, uh, you know, a lot of us have, have those kinds of thoughts. Um, you know, we thought about can't wait to become an adult. Uh, 2020, it was about focus, and we heard ministers preach it. You know, I, 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 I started preaching right at the very beginning. It was about having perfect vision, having, you know, sometimes many corrective lenses and all that stuff. Um, so correction has to come. Um, but this is what he said. He said that he allowed the church to have an entire year to get focused and realigned. He gave us an entire year because of his mercy. He granted us the perfect opportunity to slow down and realign ourselves with him. When he said he allowed the church an entire year to get our focus corrected, that clearly tells me that something was out of focus. Nobody wanted to admit it. Everybody wanted to make excuses. I couldn't. I didn't. I had to, we got to, uh, do every excuse under the sun. Every excuse under the sun. He said, I gave you a year. I'm going to tell you how specific this message is. When the Lord was giving it to me, I'm going to tell you there are some of you that I saw in your faces. That's how real this is. It's that serious. As your pastor, I'm so grieved right now that I can't hardly breathe. I feel like something has just wrapped its claws around my lungs. Not literally, but I'm that grieved. Because I know the seriousness of the season that we're in. He said something was out of focus. One thing was obvious. One thing that was obvious was that anything and everything had taken priority over a lot of folks' personal relationships with the Lord. I'm just going to throw it out there because I can that's what I'm supposed to do. It's not fun. It's not easy. It's not enjoyable to me, but I'm not the one that did it. Those that found themselves in that situation, they're the ones that did it. Amen? But the Father in His mercy, He said, I granted you the perfect opportunity to slow down and realign. And let me say this. As your pastor, I have seen many people who have done just that. You have, man, you have slowed down. You just turned the car off and said, I'm stopping right where I am. God, I'm getting realigned with you. You know, your car will drive a whole lot better when you get your front end aligned. Do you know that? Your tires will last longer. Your ride is less bumpy. Right? I've seen people do that. But I'm going to tell you something else that I've also seen. I've seen many people who have not. I've seen people that still continue to make excuses. And you put your life out there for everybody to see. I'm not looking for it. You throw it in my face. I don't go hunting for it. You say, hey, this matters more to me. Than my personal walk with the Lord. This matters more to me than my testimony. Listen to me. Your testimony is yours alone. Yours alone. And you're responsible for it. It is what you make it. Now, I know there's some really super religious people right now. Maybe you're 
watch it online and you want to say, that preacher's judging people. No, no, no. Don't even start that. No, no. But I'm going to tell you what it is. You are being judged. But I'm going to tell you, it's not by me. I'm here to tell you, standing toe to toe and eye to eye. I'm not judging anybody. But look at what John chapter 12, verse 48 says. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last days. The word's judging you. The word. If your life is not lining up with the word, the word is judging you. It's not the church. This kick that people have got on through the decades of the church is a bunch of judgmental, hypocritical, this, that, and the other, and they use that as an excuse not to come. That's ridiculous. We're not judging anybody. It's the Word of God. The truth is the truth, and it always will be the truth. The Bible says that there'll come a time when people will try to say that right is wrong and wrong is right, but I'm here to tell you today, the truth is the truth, and it'll always be the truth, and sweetie, it doesn't matter if it's your circumstances or my situation, God is not going to change his word to say that sin is okay. We can make all the excuses we want to, but it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. How do we know? How do we know this? It's evidenced by our testimony. It's like Paul was telling the Corinthians. He said, you're living proof. Your life is living proof of what you are on the inside. The Bible says from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But I'm going to tell you, their lip service is only part of it. And we're going to get to that here in just a second. Our testimony is what proceeds out of the abundance of our heart through our lips, but it's also the life that we live. What I am doing this morning is not judging you, but what I am doing is loving you enough to tell you the truth, because that's what's going to make you free. And to bring to your awareness something that must be corrected in this season. When he said there is no more time, that's exactly what he meant. You don't get another year to realign. You just had that. And what did we do with it? What did we do with it? You know? Some people are no more committed to the cause of Christ and building the kingdom in 2021 than they were in 2020 or than they were in 2019. How do you know that, preacher? Because I look at your lives. Social media has made it extremely comfortable for people to put everything that they do and don't do out there. I don't know what people are thinking, Brother Ken. I just don't understand. What I'm telling you is that those that continue to resist surrender are actually walking in rebellion or perversion, which is witchcraft. Perversion. You're living a perverted form of the life of a believer. Because it doesn't line up with the word. Can I see it, ain't it? But it's good. This is a good thing. It goes on. Matthew 15, verse 8. It says, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. I'm telling you, it's not just what you say. You can say all day, I love the Lord, I love the Lord, I love the Lord, but you got to live. I love God. I love Him. I love Him with everything in me. you got to live it. You can't just talk it. you got to walk it. In the same way, there are many in the church globally 
and lonely and hunger to grow. There are those in the church, there's that remnant that have risen up out of the rubble of brokenness that are so desperate for more of God that they'll take any morsel that they can get because they know that's their life source. The government may not think that the church is essential, but for a true believer, they have found absolutely not it is essential. Absolutely, because the church is a life source of the believer. These people that have gotten up on a, 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 a new idea that, you know, you don't need the church anymore, you can just go out here and, you know, do your own thing. That's a lie from the devil. I'm just going to tell you, it's a lie from the devil. It don't line up with the word. It's not scriptural. It's not biblical. That's just an excuse. And I see what it is doing to your spiritual walk. Like it or not. It makes me angry at the enemy and it breaks my heart for the individual. And I see it happening over and over. Those that are hungry for more of the Lord, they're seeking a deeper awareness, a stronger faith. They want to mature in Christ. This is where it gets really good right here. Hang on with me. This is the word he spoke to me. He said, concerning 2021, he said in very specific words, it's time for the church to grow up. He said, it's time for the church to grow up. He said that we had a year to focus our attention on him. He said, now we are responsible for putting what we have learned into practice. He said, in the natural, at age 21, you are considered legal. You get it, 2021? He said, you are considered legal to do many things. He said, you can get an adult driver's license. You can adopt a child. You can legally get a gun. Buy it. You get a permit. You can become an Uber driver. Do you know that? At 21. He said, with the new liberties come greater responsibility. How many times have you sent your child out with someone who had just turned 21 and you said, you better drive carefully? And there are other things that you can do when you're 21. And I'm going to tell you, I, I, I tried to search this out. What kind of rights do we obtain at age 21? Did you know that about 8 out of 10 of them had to do with doing some kind of dope? Or drinking some kind of alcohol. That's what the world has in store for you. And we want to believe what the devil says about us. Instead of what the father says about us. They had about 8 out of 10 different ways to say you can buy alcohol. I thought, you know, that's ridiculous. They run around in circles chasing their tail because they don't even know who they are. And they're deceived, completely deceived. He said that you have these new liberties, you have new responsibilities. He said that the church, all believers, are now carrying a greater weight of responsibility and a greater weight of accountability. He said, but they also have greater power, access to greater power and greater liberty that is obtained by spiritual growth in the Lord. So I'm telling you, you had 2020 to get your house in order. If you did, praise God. If you didn't, you better get with it because you're going to be held responsible. You can't make any excuses. Those of you that are here today, you're here today because you wanted to. I'm going to tell you, there are a lot of people that could have been here that chose not to because they wanted to make an excuse. Amen? And everybody thinks 
thinks their excuse is good. Everybody thinks their excuse is good enough. In Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, listen, he's, he corrects the church. He says, you're falling short of God's desire through your personal growth. You don't even realize it, but you're just not growing up like he wanted you to. How many of you, when you have a child, not that we wish their life away, but we look forward to them growing up. We love when they grow and they mature. I said not long ago, I was talking to somebody, and I said, you know, we raise our kids to be able to, to not need us anymore, but then it breaks our hearts when they don't. That's why it's just darling and I are going to start having kids. We're going to start over. I just haven't talked to her about it yet. The truth is that we can all do more to grow closer to the Lord. There's not one of us in here this morning that can't draw closer to the Lord. We know that. You know, it's like it's like talking about sin. The Bible says that he that sins that he has no sin. It's a lie, and the truth's not in it. You know, we've all sinned, we've all come short of the glory of God. We can all draw closer to the Lord. We can all have a stronger relationship with the Father. And we do that by recognizing his love, but we also do that by recognizing our failures and our faults and repent. You don't do it just by ignoring it. You don't do it by continuing to do the same thing and expecting something to be different. That's craziness. You just don't do that. He said, I gave you milk, not solid food, because you weren't ready for it. He said, you couldn't do it. You just couldn't. He want, God wants us to move past our elementary walk into a more mature walk. You know, our school teachers, they start out in grade school, in kindergarten and grade school and all that, and they grow the children and they teach them the best that they possibly can so that they'll be able to move to middle school. There's a natural progression that's supposed to take place. And then from middle school on up to high school, and then for some, from high school on to college, I'm going to tell you something else that the Lord laid on my heart. It is what it is. You know, my kids, we send them to college. And so, but, you know, there's a tremendous push for several years for kids to go off to college. So now there's a great shortage for folks that are in the trades. And if you young people that don't want to go to school, I'm going to just tell you, if you get in some kind of trade, you can really make a lot of money, you know. But I'm going to tell you something that the Lord began to speak to my heart about. He said, one critical mistake that the church made was that when we were involved in this great push for all of our kids to go to college, what we didn't realize, we didn't stop to realize, and we didn't discern, was that the colleges are full of the liberal professors that are pushing their own agendas into the hearts and the minds of our kids, and in a four-year time, they're brainwashing our children. And they come out acting crazy in a shop cat. Some people, even here this morning, you may have been saved five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years, and not grown any closer to the Lord than when you first accepted Christ in your heart. Because that happens. Some try to pretend that they're closer to the Lord now than at any other point in their life. They don't even say it with their mouth. But their testimony says something different. Matthew 7, 16 says, by their fruit or their actions, that's what it's talking about. It says, you'll recognize or you'll know 
It's not about judging. It's saying you'll know what somebody's about by their actions, by their life, by their testimony. Amen? Isn't that what it's saying? It's saying you spot them a mile away. That is by their contrived doctrine and self-focus, the fruits of their character will be obvious. He said, do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs or good fruit from thistles or tumbleweeds? No. It doesn't make sense because the fruit's not there. It doesn't make sense to say, oh, I love Jesus, I love the Lord, God's been good to me, better to me than he has anybody. But then act like he doesn't matter to you. It's ridiculousness. Who are you trying to fool? You ain't kidding nobody. You're just making yourself look silly. You go say that to Sister Dolores when, when, when your life ain't adding up. I'm going to tell you what she's thinking. She may not say it to you, but she'll be thinking, who are you trying to talk to? Because I know you. I watch you. I see you. It's not that I'm looking for it. You put it in my face. Fruit's just not there. I need an assistant. I, I, I need a man. Somebody that would support me in anything to the best of their ability. Oh, Patrick, thank you. Hey, Tara, would you grab me um, one of those chairs up there? Brother? Reach in for one, please. I'm like Brother Patrick, sit right here in this chair. In the front. How about that? So, he's playing my hypothetical assistant, okay? Let me set this up for you. He used to be hooked on pornography. <laughs> he had a terrible gambling addiction. He was mean, hateful. He lived without any regard for anyone else. He's a compulsive liar, a womanizer, and a thief. He was still you blind. Only thing you had to know is murder anybody that I know of. But here's the good news. Praise God, he got saved. Give the Lord a hand. He accepted Christ into his heart, but that was 35 years ago. Since that day that he went to the altar, and I remember it was right here 35 years ago, he's never gone back. He hadn't spent any time in private or corporate prayer other than when the the preachers would pray to open the service or close the service. That's the only time he's prayed, Brother Ken, all these years. He hadn't tried to read the Word except when he comes to church and he hears it in the occasional Sunday school class that he attends, occasionally, when he doesn't have something else to do, when there's not a ball game on him. But now I say he's playing. No way, watch him anyway. He's been busy doing what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, because that's what matters to him. You know, post Bible verses all over social media that he's copied from his wife's page. Because <laughs> he couldn't find one if he had to. But keep in mind that my assistant is still a born-again believer. I mean, he'll tell you if you ask him about it. He'll say, yeah, I got saved 35 years ago. There's just not been any growth since then. Spiritually, <laughs> this is what he looks like. So 
This is a perfect example of the majority of believers. Because they're spiritually immature. And because of their own doing, because of their own rebellion, because of their own resistance, lack of repentance, whatever, they've refused to mature in the Lord, not even as a volunteer. So as silly as it looks in the natural, I want you to hear me real clear. It's actually that profane in the spirit. As silly as that looks in the natural, it's actually that profane in the spirit. And that's what I heard. And that's what I heard. Especially when we know what we're supposed to do. And we know what we're responsible for. And we know what we're accountable for doing. I've got it right here circled. And I don't know which one of you said it, but we have to be in our position so that other people can get in theirs. You think you don't matter. I'm telling you in the season that we are in now, in 2021, it is time to grow up. It matters. You are responsible. You have much more liberty than you've ever had before, but you have much more responsibility and accountability. Get in your position. Quit doing donuts in the parking lot. That's not a grown up thing to do. It's dangerous and it's silly. strive for a deeper spiritual life and there's some truths in growing in maturity that we're going to have to remember. And one of those is that you're going to meet perversions to your spiritual walk. You're going to meet perversions, perverted forms of faith that will try 
may entice you. And it will try to draw you. The Bible tells us very clearly in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, Beware or be on your guard of the false or phony prophets or teachers who come to you dressed or disguised as sheep, appearing gentle, genuine, and innocent, but inwardly like ravenous wolves. He said, be careful. Because people are going to try to entice you, to get you out from under a covering. And when you are not under a covering, you, you end up that you are absolutely in the middle of a storm. And storms can be scary. And they can be dangerous. These perversions that we run into, they're counterfeits. And the Spirit of the Lord said they're counterfeits because the enemy makes you think that you have more than you really do. You take somebody that doesn't know they've got a bunch of counterfeit bills, they think they have more than what they really do. And he said that's what the enemy does to a lot of folks because they have not, they have not grown spiritually, they have not committed themselves, they have not been rooted and grounded, they have not gotten in there because they're too busy trying to be out here and they think they have more than they really do. Better be careful. But don't be mistaken. You can have all of God that you want. You can, but you got to seek him out. The Bible actually teaches us that whenever we accept Christ in our heart, the Holy Spirit comes to live within us. We have access to the Father then. I don't know if you guys remember back last year we preached a message and I said, you know, it's it's like a child. I could take I could take one of these babies or one of these little kids and set them in Brother Albert's brand new red Corvette. And it'd do them no good. They have access to all that power. But it would do them no good because they don't understand what it is to use a key. Spiritually, a lot of folks are the same way. When you accept Christ in your heart, you have access to all the power. You just don't know how to use it. And until you begin to grow and mature in Christ, you're not going to know. So it's very important. It's time to grow up. You're legal. You're legal. It's 2021. Oh, Hebrews chapter 5, 14 says, Solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. You've trained yourself. You said, it's not about coming in here to get stirred up. It's about getting stirred up when we're out there at the house. Pour stuff in you that's going to get you fired up so that when we come together, it's like we were saying in practice, in rehearsal the other day, and Sister Darlene had read something or heard something, and it said, when you're at home, you practice. So when you come together, you're able to rehearse before you perform. There's a big difference. And that's what we have to do spiritually. So I'm trying to speak to you this morning. One of those distractions, something that it'll look like. It'll say, oh, there's something better out there. There's, you know, Teaching here is not good enough. Preaching is not anointed enough. I'm great. I'm, I'm more mature than this. I've grown past this. I'm just going to look elsewhere. I'm not happy. This is not fulfilling me. To tell you the truth, you may not be fulfilling your job. That might be the problem. It might be. You're not walking in your anointing. Because I'm going to tell you, when you don't walk in your anointing, when into your position, you are miserable. But once you align with him, once you do, once you answer, once you find, I'm not talking about getting over there, I'm talking about being where, in the position he's called you to, once you get in that place, man, there's comfort and there's liberty in that. And there's peace in that. And that's what he wants for all of us. People think it's so hard to grow spiritually. No, it's not. It's harder to keep from growing spiritually than it is to surrender to the Lord. 
Monday night at prayer, Sister Dana, I, 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 we go around and ask you what people are, have been hearing from the Lord, and, and she said, she kept seeing how the Father had prepared a banquet table for us, that it was our decision to eat. And this is your invitation to the Father Christ to y'all come back up here. This is your invitation from the Father. I don't know if you'll ever be invited again. I hope you will. I hope you'll have another opportunity. But what if you don't? What if you're watching this morning and this is your last opportunity that you have to come and sit at his table? He's prepared this beautiful meal for you. But if you don't eat... What if this is your last chance? What I do know is that the Lord has commissioned me this morning to tell you that this is 2021. It's time to grow up, be responsible, use the tools that God's given you. This morning, no matter who you are, you can repent, you can recommit, or you can sit here and resist everything. You can refuse everything that he has for you. The choice is yours. With every head's bowed and every eye's closed. In case anyone has to leave this morning, I want to encourage you to come back tonight, 6 o'clock. We'll have the conclusion of this. Thank you.
We are preparing for renown, so come and, and uh, be ready to be a part of that. January the 8th and the 10th. Be sure to tell all your friends, your family, loved ones. And uh, we're just excited about all that the Lord's going to do. Amen? Amen. 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 For now, we still need waters and drink. If anybody can bring those, please let me know. And bake with do individually or bad. All right, Father, we thank you again for another service that was filled with your spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming and being one with us, uniting with us again. And Lord, we ask, God, that, that what we have heard, that it would remain in our hearts, that we would remember it. Lord, that we would remember your presence here, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, go with us as each one of us leaves and, and goes to their own homes and bring us back together. We, we do thank you, Lord, for the promises that you had in, in 2021. And we thank you for all that you did in 2020 as well. But we do look expectantly for what you have, and we know that there are good things to come in 2021. We thank you, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen.